Hey there, mama, and welcome back to the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast episode 47. I'm Emily McDermott, and I am here beside you on this journey as we work together to declutter your home, head, and heart. One of the main questions I get in my Facebook group, which you can join at tinyurl.com forward slash moms overcoming overwhelm, is what to do with our stuff when we finally decided that we're going to get rid of it. I am a huge proponent of buy nothing groups, which are hyper local groups where you can gift members things that you don't need. And you can ask for things that you might need. I like buy nothing groups because I find that people are less flaky than they are on Facebook marketplace. And I recommend in general that if you're going to sell on Facebook marketplace or any other secondhand site like ThreadUp, Poshmark and so forth, that you take the value of your time into account. If you're trying to sell something for $5, but then you spend three hours between taking a photo of it, posting it, following up with flaky people, and all the other things that go into selling, it's likely not worth your time. That's why I'm so excited for this conversation with Melanie Wegner today, because she has had success selling on Facebook Marketplace and is sharing her best tips with you. She's actually the second Australian guest on the show. The first was Elise Rooney in episode 25. And like in that episode, I was reminded of some Australian English terms that are different than in the States. Like when she says kitchen bench, which is actually the kitchen countertop. And of course, nappies instead of diapers. Melanie is a happily married wife and mum of three boys living in Adelaide, South Australia. She blogs at Money Savvy Mama and is also very active on Instagram under the same name, Money Savvy Mama, which is where I first met her. Mel is passionate about helping women to manage their finances, live with less, and thrive in their season of motherhood. So what do you say? Grab that notebook and pen and let's dive into today's conversation with Melanie Wegener. Hey there, mama. Are you tired of all the stuff crowding your home calendar and mind? Do you wish you could say goodbye to the endless to-do list running around in your head? Want to declutter but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Welcome to Mom's Overcoming Overwhelm, where you will find proven and practical solutions to declutter your home, head, and heart. Hi, I'm Emily, a wife, boy mom, and simplicity seeker. I struggled to get pregnant and felt overwhelmed until I discovered decluttering could create the physical and emotional space I needed to become a mom. Now two kids later, I've transformed my life and motherhood by developing simple systems around decluttering, capsule wardrobes, kid stuff, cleaning and tidying, meal planning, time management, and more, and I can't wait to share them with you. If you're ready to reclaim the time and energy you crave, be present with your kids, and finally enjoy the life and motherhood you so deserve, let's kick overwhelm to the curb, shall we? Grab your lukewarm coffee, your notebook and pen, and clear off some counter space. Let's do this. Well, hey, Melanie, thank you so much for coming on the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast. I'm so happy that you're here to talk to me today. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, my pleasure. So you and I have connected over Instagram. We actually have some very random things in common, (laughs) Um, being however many oceans away. So we're both boy moms, but you're a boy mom to three and I'm a boy mom (laughs) to two. And we're both in this like minimalism space kind of. And we're both poets, which is so (laughs) crazy. And so we're always like looking at each other's poems and, you know, and I feel like you and I have also shared that we kind of process motherhood a lot through poetry too. Uh, So maybe you and I need to do a collaboration and do like a poetry book together or something. What do you think? I love that. (laughs) (laughs) So I was wondering, can you take just a minute to introduce yourself? Tell us about you, your family, kind of who you serve, and then also just kind of how you spend your time when you're not being mom to three and doing all the other stuff. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, okay, thanks so much for having me. Um, so I'm Mel. Um, I've been married for 10 years to a wonderful guy. Um, we have three energetic and beautiful boys, um, ages six, four, and two. So it's starting to get a bit easier. We live in Adelaide in South Australia. I'm a primary school teacher, relief teaching at the moment, so I can choose my days and hours, um, have some variety and avoid all the extra things that come with normal teaching. 
I get paid to attend hospital obstetrics meetings to have a say in how they're run, which I really enjoy. I'm governing council at my son's school, um, head up the wellbeing and education portfolio, which is really cool. I love travel. I lived in England for a year as an au pair when I was young and uh, all that. Um, I love all things sport. So I play netball. We're playing our grand final on Monday night, which is exciting. Yay. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Um, I love hiking and running and beach walks. I love being outside and camping when I can. I love writing letters to create change. I once had a press conference at my house with the state premier came just because I wrote a letter. So some cool things can happen when you write letters. I love entering competitions. So I've won uh, two trips to America as part of the prizes. So I've been to a lovely country twice and would love to go back. Wow, yeah. that is so cool. Yeah, anytime I think about entering a contest, I'm always like, oh, I don't know. And then I remember that you have done this amazing travel because of competition. So there you go. It's it's worth your while. And if you have questions, just reach out to Millie. <laughs> yeah. I do. Um, I enter a lot and I don't win a lot. And so last week I spent five hours entering a competition. I wrote a 10 verse poem to win $10,000 and I didn't win. So just keeping it real, I, I don't win everything that I enter. <laughs> Well, I should probably look at some of those poetry competitions too. That would be good. Yeah, definitely. And one of the things I love on your account is you also talk about side hustle ideas and just all of these creative things for uh, moms and how they can be spending, you know, less time scrolling and more time kind of doing more of these kind of activities that have more of a return on investment for how we're spending our time and our talents and everything. So that's really, I think, a unique perspective that you bring um, to the space. Thank you. I feel like we can, we can earn more, we can save more. So we can spend less or we can earn more or we can do a combination of both. And sometimes you can't reduce your spending anymore or it's really tricky. So if you can kind of add to your income a little bit um, in a creative way, I think that can also help and reduce some pressure um, that a lot of us are feeling at the moment, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And we are going to talk a little bit about a little later about how we can add to our income by selling things on Marketplace, (laughs) which is another great way. But I want you, I mean, six, four and two. You know, that's not, uh, not easy. And like you said, I always feel like I'm maybe coming out of something and then I'm like, oh no, wait, I'm still kind of in it, whatever it is, you know, with the having boys and, and, and young kids. But I was wondering if you could kind of bring us back to a time where you were sort of feeling very overwhelmed in your motherhood and you hadn't yet discovered some of these things about minimalism and simplicity and decluttering. And if you could kind of bring us back there and talk about like, what was that catalyst for you when you realized something really needs to change and I need to do something? Uh, Because a lot of the moms that are listening are kind of in that place. And I really want to inspire them to be able to make that change. Yeah. Awesome. Great question. The transition for motherhood for me was definitely harder than I thought. We were lucky to fall pregnant easily, which I know for a lot of people, I think including yourself is the opposite. And so with that comes so many blessings, but I had acute morning sickness. So I felt like I couldn't really function during pregnancy. We had a baby, but I didn't have a permanent job. I actually lost my job when I was pregnant. Our house and yard needed lots of renovations. We didn't have a huge amount of savings or financial stability. Um, Like we were in a bad position, but I guess had we waited a few more years before having children, we could have, I guess, been in a better spot. So we're okay um, and a submission with our baby, but I was overwhelmed with how little I could get done. I think nothing really prepares you for that. Just, yeah, it was it was hard. I, I like being productive. I like being busy. I feel good about myself and I can get things done. Um, so being trapped under a sleeping baby was so lovely, but really hard. Just like watching a house unravel, knowing this dinner needs to be cooked, but you haven't even had breakfast and you need to put the washing away and you need to put washing out that's still in the basket and you know then the baby finally naps you're like well do I go to the toilet do I get lunch do I put the washing on do I think about dinner and by the time you figured it out the baby's woken up and (laughs) you know it's hard I've never really had babies who sleep that well or children I'm still awake every night and so I think that messes with the heads and you don't get the full rest that you need so I tried to declutter a little bit because I had that real overwhelmed but probably more organizing than actual getting rid of stuff. It wasn't until my second baby was born a couple of years later that really hit me. My baby, well, my toddler wanted lots of attention, which is tricky at that stage. 
my baby had failure to thrive. Um, I was breastfeeding him and I thought it was fine, but he actually wasn't getting any milk or enough milk. So we had to take him back to hospital and had to start expressing. So I'd pump and then I'd feed him a bottle. There was all the appointments. So he had 12 specialists at that time, which was ridiculous and really hard. You had the lack of sleep and just like pumping stuff. So you have all the bottles and the sterilizing and I had to add formula and I was trying to do cloth nappies and just too much, right? I I think I had postnatal depression looking back. I was crying all the time and I knew I knew logically that things weren't that bad, but in that moment I just felt this overwhelming feeling of just suffocating really. I just I couldn't look past all the stuff in my house and all the things I had to do. And again, because I was pumping, there was very, very little time to do anything, let alone care for myself. It was a scary place to be. And so I, I remember one night I forced myself to go for a hike. We live quite close to a national park. And so I put on my shoes and I went, which is always the hardest thing, I think, starting. But I, I knew I had to do it. And so climbing up this hill, I remember looking out over Adelaide and just the perspective on my city gave me perspective on my life. And I realised it wasn't that bad. Like I, we could get through it. It was a stage. And even though it was really hard on you, we'd, we'd get through it. So from there, I sort of made sure I exercise a little bit more often because that makes me feel happy. I began to reduce clutter um, because clutter is so closely tied to overwhelm, isn't it? Like it's such a common thread that mothers feel. Like you you kind of find pre-kids and then post-kids, the stuff really bothers you when maybe it didn't before. Yeah, and I guess sometimes I could have opted to relax, but I knew I couldn't really relax sitting on the couch or in bed and seeing all the piles of stuff. So for me, it helped me get some things done and then I could sort of be more calm afterwards. So yeah, reducing the clutter definitely helped bring calm into my house. And I think you have to know what works for you. Some people can ignore the stuff and it really doesn't bother them. But for me and my personality, it, it was very closely linked. So yeah, I've been on a journey to sort of get things out of my house since then. Oh, wow. Yeah. One thing I haven't actually shared on the podcast before is that with my first, um, who was uh, via IVF, I had this similar experience in that I ended up exclusively pumping for him. So I know what that's like, um, where it's like you're pumping and then you're, you know, feeding and then they're supposedly resting. And then it's like the, just the cycle just over and over again, every two to three hours. And it's completely exhausting. So I do remember that season and I also totally understand that different people have different clutter thresholds. I've heard it called before, which is really interesting. And I kind of chuckle because I find that a lot of our spouses have a higher threshold, (laughs) than we. Um, but I'm definitely very sensitive to my environment, which I've always been, but I didn't realize it until I had kids. And what I realized is that when we are growing up and if you go to college or university or whatever, you're kind of like responsible for your own stuff, which is fairly limited. And then all of a sudden, if you're, you know, married or living with a partner or whatever, and you have kids, the stuff that you are responsible for, like multiplies, you know, two, three, four fold. And nobody like tells you how to do that. Like there aren't classes on how to be a stuff manager in college. (laughs) you know. (laughs) So I understand it's like, oh, no wonder, no wonder as moms, we're so overwhelmed because no one is like teaching us this. Yeah. You know? So we kind of have to figure it out the hard way. And I really appreciate um, you sharing that, that story. And so as you were kind of going from one to two, having the medical difficulties with your second son, and then going from two to three, how has, I guess, simplicity and minimalism, how has that really served you in all of these different stages? Cause I know for me having postpartum anxiety, for me, it was, I didn't have to make so many decisions because I had kind of simplified my environment. So I was able to deal with that a little bit better. I mean, I still needed medication. I still needed therapy, but I feel like it would have been a lot worse if I hadn't already started. So how has that kind of served you as you're going through these different stages of motherhood? Yeah, sure. Um, I think it helped having three boys (laughs) because it, it keeps everything simple, right? They can share the clothes there's less toys there's less shoes like they we do hand-me-downs <laughs> real well in our house um we don't have well we had one doll but we don't have heaps of dolls or different types of things so I think 
that's really good. So if your listeners can just have one the same gender for your children, that, that definitely <laughs> reduces stuff. No, but seriously, um, I think uh, reducing all the extra stuff um, helps to get jobs done quickly. So then I could go for a hike or run um, rather than spending all my evenings trying to sort out things and organize better when really I just had too much stuff. I think getting rid of stuff has helped me be more present with my children. I can focus more on them rather than the mess. I'm not perfect. Like I still get distracted and I'll see things on the bench and I'll start to sort things out. I'm like, what am I doing? And I'll go back and play. But I think it has helped for that for me. I think it's helped us financially because we spend less and we're more intentional with what we buy. We save up for what we want. Previously, I'd buy way too many things and I love a bargain. So I'd go up shopping or thrift shopping or I'd go to Kmart and I'd be excited by all these bargains. But they're not really bargains if you don't need them or if they're not serving you or if you don't feel really good in the clothes. So I've had to learn to stop shopping for fun and really be intentional with what I want. So then once we sort of reduced our spending, that's then helped us financially. Um, There's less to organise and manage. I find that my kids play better, so they're more imaginative with what they have. And I think that's sort of a common thing with mums too. Um, The open-ended activities and toys really do hold their attention for longer than the shiny thing that makes noises and lights that drive us crazy. And my boys want to play outside more. If there's not as many things inside to do, they kind of just head outside naturally and that's good for all of us. When we have less gifts and presents at Christmas and birthdays, they can have more experience-based or more experiences, I guess. So we can go to the zoo, we can go roller skating, we can go ice skating, all those kind of things. And are focusing it on the open-ended toys like the Legos, the Duplos, um, the magnetic tiles, the trains, that just increases their play yeah, more imaginatively. I also find it's easy to prep for guests. So when you've got someone coming over, I still do the mad rushes we all do and, you know, hide things away, but it's not as crazy as it used to be. Like it used to have been a long time preparing for guests, um, even just for a morning tea. In theory, it should be easy to clean, but I've got three little boys and I just can't keep on top of it. So my house isn't actually clean. My husband probably would like it <laughs> cleaner because that bothers him more than it bothers me. But I can live with that, provided that the stuff's out of the way. So I guess you're just letting your threshold as well. And what bothers you? Like for me, if I, my benches are clear in my kitchen and the washing's done in a way, I don't fold it iron, I just put it away in drawers. Um, and if the toys are to a good standard, then I find I'm, I can cope. So I think, yeah, finding what, yeah, what works for you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm nodding my head. <laughs> Everything you say, <laughs> because we have such similar experiences It's probably because we have boys, you know, I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah. We have the same toys. We do you know, the same thing. And I have kind of a weird question because I, I sure. interviewed someone else from Australia, uh, Elise Rooney. She's at the wholesome mama show. And she was saying benches now is benches like countertops. Is that yeah. what that is? Okay. Yeah, sorry, we don't use- benches is like you sit on a park bench, like at the park. Like, yeah, right. different. yeah. So here we are. We're learning. Here's some cross cultural communication stuff for everyone on the podcast. So well, we like in England, the countertops. We say, yeah. We say chips here. That can mean crisps or it can mean hot right. chips. They're like, well, they're, chi- they're crisps. And they're chips. I'm like, we just call them all chips. We're a bit lazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, One man. Thing possible. I need to uh, brush up on my Australian English a little bit. Oh, not at Thank all. Thank you for, thank you for um, explaining that a little bit. Because, yes, that is a huge thing, I think, at least what I've seen with uh, American moms. It's like the clean countertops. I mean, that really helps. Yeah. And for me, like, I have um, a couple things for my nightly tidy, not much. But one of the things is just uh, wiping down, just wiping down the countertops because coming down in the morning into the kitchen and having like sticky countertops with all the stuff on it, it just makes me want to go crawl back into bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, very true. Yeah. Um, um, so oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Sorry. And um, I, I like the minimal mum on yes. uh, YouTube and Instagram. And I remember she was saying once in one of her videos, like get everything off the countertops like unless Mm. it's like a coffee machine or a kettle if you only use it once a day like a toaster put it underneath I used to have so much stuff on my countertops including all the tea and coffee canisters and the soda stream and just ridiculous amount of stuff and now I've barely got anything we've got a thermomix that's on the bench now but really everything else just goes underneath and when I use it I'll bring it out and put it back afterwards and I think that's really helped me a lot that simple tip yeah, that's helped us. 
Oh yeah, definitely. Because I always talk about how when you're, when you see clutter, your brain registers it as like undone tasks. And so if you're able to not have that, then it's like, okay, well, there's nothing I have to be doing because everything is clear, which is kind of cool. Um, Okay. So we are going to talk about marketplace because I was talking, we were talking before and I have said before, like, I always want to make sure for an overall mom that when they're deciding whether they want to sell something or donate something, like when they've actually made the decision, okay, I do not want this in my house anymore, which is really great to have made that decision. But then it is, okay, what do I do with it? And then they get kind of paralyzed by that. And I have always talked about having kind of like the selling threshold that I want it to be worth the amount of time that I'm kind of putting into it. So under normal circumstances, if it's something for me, normally it's like maybe $50. Like if I'm selling something for $50 or more, I put it on a marketplace. If it's less than that, I'm going to put it on buy nothing. And that's kind of my decision. But I was telling you that my boys wanting to sell everything so that they could get their Lego set, that was for a specific purpose. It was almost like having a garage sale, you know, but not at my house all at one time. So I was okay selling something for $5, $10 because they were trying to collect the money to buy Mm -hmm. one Lego set. So I would love for your tips for the overwhelmed mom about like how you would recommend they approach selling versus donating with limited time and energy. And yeah, because I think we have different perspectives and I would love for the mamas to kind of hear what you have to say about it. Yeah, sure. Um, there's different, definitely different ways of approaching it. And I know decluttering expert, but I guess for me, it depends what stage of the decluttering process you're at um, and the kind of the mental state you're in, I guess. If you are very overwhelmed and you're like, you're not coping, just get it gone. Like it doesn't really matter. I think if you need it gone, get it gone, pop it in your car, take it to your thrift shop. I think many decluttering experts encourage us to donate our excess and not bother with selling which is fine if you have a lot of cash. And for a lot of those real experts who've got millions of followers, money isn't an issue. They make they make enough, right? And so I've heard some, yeah, not say don't bother with anything under a 50 or a 100, whereas I feel like every every dollar does add up. Every $5, 10 that you can make really does add, add up. So for me, $5 is my minimum, um, which is a personal choice and that that's cool. I find that the cheaper things often sell really quickly because people don't have to consider it too much. They're like, oh, $5, awesome, bargain. Sometimes I've gone to put it on the Buy Nothing group and I've thought, oh, actually, I'm just going to see if I can get money. And if it doesn't go within a few days, then I'll just op shop it or do the Buy Nothing group. But I have found that can be quite a good way to earn money and it can reduce that pressure. So, yeah, I feel like if you... If you're struggling and you just need to donate it, it gets out your house quickly. Um, you can have those quick wins, which is really helpful, particularly at the start of your journey. Whereas re- when you're selling things, if you've got an item that's got lots of value, you find it hard to part with or you're not really sure, you might have buyer's remorse. Um, you know how much you paid for it. Or maybe you got that as a present and you're like, well, I feel like, you know, that was my present. I want to still keep it. Maybe you you could replace it with something else that suits better by selling that item and then keeping that money aside. Yeah, I feel like that that can be beneficial. So for me, it's enabled me to save up for things, to spend on experiences and treats for myself or to replace maybe some cheaper boots that weren't really comfortable and save up some some nice R.M. William boots or something that will then last a long time. If things hang around for too long, then I'll get a bit impatient. I'll reduce the price or I'll uh, delete it and I'll, um, load it again or put it on Gumtree or something but I find it's easy to part with some items that are of value when we get something monetary in return that's for me anyway I think otherwise I wouldn't part with a lot of things in my home because I would feel guilty or like I spent all that money or that person gave it to me but yeah that that just helped me part with stuff um, a few years ago my hubby had a big birthday I won't say what number it was but I wanted him to go to the AFL grand final so Aussie rules footy is quite big over here I won't explain how that works, but Google AFL footy, it's pretty cool. So I wanted him to go to the grand final and sorry, tickets were $1,500. So ridiculously expensive. We had a baby, I mean, a toddler and um, I was pregnant. So I wanted to surprise him. So with his brother, we arranged to have time off work, flights, accommodation, the ticket. 
And I decided I wanted to earn that money myself without him realizing. So I sold $1,500 worth of stuff around our house to pay for it. And I gave all the cash to my brother-in-law to then pay for all the tickets. And there was a real pride in that because I had worked really hard to sell things around my house, including three garden sheds, which obviously you know, paid for some of the price. But that was really motivating because those $5 items here and there all really added up and seeing the money in the jars build up and get quite heavy, as you can imagine, was really motivating. I think I've sold about $10,000 worth of stuff from our home. I kind of stopped keeping track after a while, but um, that's been really good. And I, I feel like our house feels lighter and a lot of that comes down to selling, I think. Yeah. Oh my gosh, $10,000. That's amazing. I you, think should, like, have a, you should have a course about this for real, Mel. This is like not chump change, as they say. <laughs> You're very good. Well, yeah. Well, I think that you brought up some really good points when you were kind of starting decluttering and you're kind of having those first layers, you know, of the process, then it is like, you literally feel like you can't breathe, like you're suffocating, right. With all your stuff, or there actually is a book. I still have to read it called suffocation. I love that word. So, you know, then it's like, okay, however you need to get it out of your house, get it out of your house. And that's what I always say, you know, because we hear here um, in the U S about Goodwill and okay, well, we don't really know what happens when you donate things to Goodwill. And I totally am all for doing things as ethically and responsibly as you can. But at the beginning, when you feel like you need just to be able to breathe, to move forward, then it's like, just do what you need to do to get it out of your house. So I totally agree with that. And then I really love the example you gave about your hubby because it's like, it was for a specific purpose, you know? And so it was like really having that goal. And then that's kind of what I've been doing with the Lego set, but on a much smaller scale, (laughs) we were trying to reach a hundred dollars, you know, not like thousands of dollars, but, um, but then you're really able to look at it. And I find it even with kids, it's very motivating because they can say that they have this emotional attachment to something or, oh, I don't want to get rid of that. But as soon as you say, well, you really wanted to buy that Lego set. Right. And I think I could probably get 20 bucks for this Hot Wheels thing. They're like, oh yeah, great. You know, get rid of it. I'm like, oh, that's yeah. easy. So I really love, I really love that advice. And I think that it's smart to, yeah, do what you have to do at the beginning. Then you can become a little bit more discerning and really see what is your time and capacity to be able to sell. And you do have kind of that sense of pride, especially if you're not maybe like me, I'm not working full time and I'm trying to do some of more like the poetry, the side hustle type of things. And it's nice to be able to have something for yourself just to be able to have that. There's really that sense of, of ownership. So is there anything else you want to share about marketplace before we wrap up? Yeah, sure. So yeah, I think just for the mum who's really overwhelmed, just get it out, get it gone. It doesn't really matter what you do with it. If you're okay with that, if you're okay with it going, just pop it in your car, drop it off somewhere. It's most important just to get it gone. But I guess if if money is really tight for you and you're really stressed out about that, that might be more important than getting the stuff gone quickly. So potentially, you know, figure out which is donations, um, which is the selling stuff, which is recycling, kind of put in different um, categories even if you can't sell it right then, just pop it in your office, pop it in the basement, pop it somewhere with a time limit. Like, you know, in a week or two, I'm going to come back when I've got more energy, then I'm going to see if I can sell it. And then once you've listed it, put a time limit on it. Think, think okay, two weeks time, if it hasn't gone, I'm going to reduce the price or I'm going to op shop it or thrift shop it. Yeah, I think if you're struggling to decide what to let go, yeah, selling might be helpful. But if you're in that real overwhelmed stage, just get it out. I've got a few selling tips for Marketplace if you'd like to those I'd offer, often put them on both um, marketplace and gumtree um, just to sort of get different buyers you can offer delivery for an extra charge and I don't always want to deliver it but I think for some people who don't try that might be an option for them and it might so they want, might want to buy what you've got I uh, try listing everything you never know what might sell and often the most random things sell really quickly yet the things that you think will sell quickly they don't it's really annoying actually I'd recommend to sell things of low value because it does all add up and often people are attracted to the cheap things, whereas the items are a few hundred dollars, they might think, oh, maybe I'll just go online and buy that instead. 
I definitely recommend your kids like getting them on board and selling their stuff so they can help clean up the art and they can take the photos, they can write the description, they can take the money when the person comes to get it and they can be a part of that whole process and then that motivates them to get rid of more things and also kind of get a sense of what money is worth. You know, you might want you might want to buy a Lego, but how much does that actually cost you and how many Hot Wheels things do you have to sell to sort of pay for that, which that definitely helps them. I often list for a higher price to start with because it's worth a shot and some people just pay more money than they're worth. I know I've often paid more money than it's really worth and down the track gone, why did I pay so much? But, you know, why not list it higher? I'll leave the item by my door um, because it saves the hassle of being stuffed around by buyers. And I often just say, oh, my baby's having a nap. I don't want to be to be disturbed or my husband's sleeping off night shift or um, we'll wake the dog or if we're not home, I'll just pretend that someone's at home sleeping or, yeah our big scary guard dog will bark and that saves heaps of time and being stuffed around I reckon and I've never had people who weren't honest so I probably sold 200 things this way once someone forgot to leave money and I asked them and they transferred me money yeah but other than that everyone's been honest which is cool um make it a nice transaction because then you get a higher rating which I think helps with selling And if you want to, keep track of your sales. So for a while, I had a little book that I'd actually record how much I bought, paid for something, how much I sold it for, what the difference was. And I quite enjoyed seeing it month by month what my stats were. I've kind of given that away now because I got sick of doing it. But it was motivating at the start and I could see, oh, okay, I I did actually lose $50 when I bought this. Or other times I'd buy it secondhand and then sell it for more than I bought it for, which was a bit cheeky, but why not? Yeah, so definitely recording it can help as well. Wow. Those are amazing. Thank you so much for sharing those. And yeah, this is like marketplace, Facebook marketplace 101, (laughs) our new course. (laughs) So I know that my listeners are going to want to connect with you because you have lots of tips, not only just about marketplace, but just about being per your name on Instagram money savvy. So can you go ahead and let people know where they can connect with you? Oh, so kind. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm mainly on Instagram. Um, my page is Money Savvy Mama, um, M-A-M-M-A. Um, I'm on Facebook as well. I've got a website, moneysavvymama.com, um, which is a work in progress. I've got 200 drafts I have to finish and upload and I've, I've got lots of things. I've got notepads full of ideas. I've got books I've started writing, but you know, it's a stage of life. I just can't do it all. And so I'm just trying to sit with that and be okay with you know, not having everything finished, but at some point it will be okay. And yeah, I'd love to connect with the listeners over there if they, if they want. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. It was so wonderful talking with you and yeah, I just really appreciate you coming on and giving us all the tips. Well, thank you so much. Such a privilege. If you like today's podcast, here's what you can do. Just take 30 seconds to leave me a review. I know you're a busy mama. You're overwhelmed, in fact. But 30 seconds of your day makes such an impact. I'll be blessed by your words. They'll definitely make my day. And who knows, you might be entered for this month's giveaway. An Apple podcast scroll down to write a review. Thanks so much for your time. I'm so grateful for you.